Shem Shala 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 Kazam! And welcome to another episode of the Unicorn Circuit, your weekly dose of banking, car news, my towns, bad Ali G impressions. And is it even legal? Our new segment where we discuss things that may or may not be legal. How was your week, Martin? I ate a schnitzel. Really? Yep. I had a beef schnitzel once, that was good. Did you? Yep. Did they even make such a thing? I've never heard of a beef schnitzel it's before. It's like a veal schnitzel, but I'm very confused about the difference. Really? Yeah, I mean, they're both made of cow, right? They are. Yeah, I mean, you... I, I had a friend the other know? day who had... Well, because veal's a baby cow. I had a friend the other day who had a steak and then he had a milkshake. That's messed up, man. Ooh. Like that's, yeah. What's See, that doing? I find that a little bit strange. And then a few minutes later, he had to go to the bathroom and I said, what's wrong? He said, the milk's trying to get back in the cow in his guts. That's messed up. Wow. Anyway, man, we've got a huge show. Uh, let's not lie, it's no bigger than usual. <laughs> so but not... we, need to, we need to kick off. <laughs> Do we? Yeah. Into the car news? If you're in England, kick off means like, have a fight. Does it? Yeah. I thought it anyway, meant kick a ball. Just a fact. That's what it meant. What are we Over starting here. with? Martin, we're going to start with the car news. Let's kick right into car news. Some people got upset because I did some mods on my YouTube show called Mighty Car Mods. I was working on a car, just him and me, installed a Honda B16B. Some people said that's a Mini. No, you can't. I said I'll do what I want. <laughs> Can't even think we can use that last bit. We'll bleep it. Um, Martin, let's talk YouTube news. This is awesome. <laughs> we're talking, we're talking uh, Honda engines going into minis. YouTube news, everybody. Just uh, in case there wasn't enough news on YouTube, there's some more in now. YouTube news is the circle jerk of the YouTube generation. So much so. You've got to have great news to make news, to have news to talk about on the news show that's only news about the thing that you just did on the internet and then something else and then it did a big circle. That's the definition of circle friendly times. So Martin, uh, Mighty Car Mods, the other channel that we make, uh, the good one, uh, we made a video last week of us doing a Honda B16B install. Uh, everyone loved it, man. Mm. Uh, it went all over the intervals. Mm. Uh, over half a million views in the first day or something mm. went crazy. Everyone loved it. 98% of people liked it, Mum. 98%? Yeah. What about the other 2%? Good question. One person um, accused my engine of being homosexual, which makes no sense at all. I'll it never doesn't understand. even have a sexual I'll never understand. stupid. The other people accused the car of, of, of um, enjoying relations with its own self. Um, and and a small minority minis. of those people, I don't know, it doesn't make any sense. What some people said, Martin, and what we're talking about today, which is potentially controversial, is that some people said you can't do uh, engine swaps on cars. What? You just can't. Not really? allowed to. Shouldn't be allowed to. Shouldn't be allowed to. No, they're just like, you shouldn't. You can't do it. Why? Because people have this understanding that everybody has their idea of what they think is a special thing and a not special thing. Things that are not special to them, they can do what they want, but things that are special to them, you can't touch. So some people are upset that the uh, Mini, Classic Mini, uh, is getting a Honda engine in it. They're going, you're not allowed. They're saying you should have put a new Mini engine in it. But the new Minis are BMWs, right, that are made in Germany, so they're not... I see I fell asleep with my eyes open. No engine conversions. Do you, reckon that's a, do you reckon that's someone who's, who's had a car with engine conversion? No. I think it's hard to understand how amazing that can be. Not always how amazing that can be until you've owned one. To get the engine to fit, though, the car requires some substantial modifications and people are not happy. They're like, you should just leave it as it is. Ever seen a race car? No. Yeah, no, race cars are almost never, like, you know, they have production race cars and then you go and see, like, the V8 supercars. They're nothing like that. They made of tube metal that someone TIG welds together with space age titanium stuff. It's not the same as a Commodore you go and buy from the shops. It poses some interesting questions. It poses some interesting questions though, Martin, of like what is authenticity? Now if we look at minis, and there's gonna be some mini nuts out there that are just awesome. Um, I love That's you guys, not you're nice, fighting man. You and you can't say that about people. What? Oh, you're talking about cars. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you're talking about someone else. The mini enthusiasts. Now, from when the Mini was uh, designed by, you know, Essagonis or whatever back in the late 50s or whatever, the Mini's changed. Like, it basically, it kind of looks the same, actually. The, the Mini itself looks the same. Yeah, there's been different versions, but it kind of looks very similar. But different engines have come and gone, Martin. Different technologies mm. have come and gone. That's true. And hence why this Mini, uh, which they refer to as a JDM Mini or a JSpec Mini, which started a whole internet argument of itself because this car was designed specifically, created and sold for the Japanese domestic market, therefore fulfilling the absolute definition of what JDM means. Um, it's got certain technologies that were not in the original Mini, like mm. airbags, it's got a stereo, it's got speakers, it's got central locking now. Air These things that we've added. Um, air conditioning that was put in, in Japan in the video I showed that was made in Japan. And 
when you start pulling that mini apart, I don't know if you notice, but when you start pulling parts off, all the back of it's got Japanese writing and Japanese companies make, like the instrument cluster yeah. is Japanese writing on the back. And in England, even cars that weren't specifically made for JDM market, a lot of those ones still got the same dials because yeah. Mini in England, whoever owned it went, hello Japan, please make us some of your awesome dials. And they went, okay, they stopped making for Lexus, who is the other company they're making for, and made them for Minis. And so the question is, Martin, was it okay for that, for the Japanese safety requirements slash government slash import whatever, was it okay for them to say, you've got to change the car to add the air conditioning, the side intrusion bars, the airbags? And then at what point is it not okay for someone to then do more to it? Now, I don't know the answers. What I'm going to say though is that whoever lives with the car, I think should kind of be free to do whatever they like with it. It's a crazy concept. People get really fired up when they see some like really wealthy person buy a Ferrari and then hit it with a hammer on the internet. Have you seen that? Is that just mindless breaking stuff though? Yes, it is. Oh, I don't, I don't know how to feel about mindlessly breaking stuff. That's not. Oh, no, I'm that's not. not... That, but some people, the, the point that I'm trying to make is, some people say you should have given it to me. Oh. Like if you're going to break it, you should have given it to me. But the, I don't think the guy who is having some mental breakdown and breaking his car outside the front of the factory with a hammer, I don't think he's thinking about like being altruistic and giving it away. He's just being a complete knob and breaking his stuff. Martin, let's move on from that. Com so, many, so many things to, to, to talk about, but they can wait for another day. Would you like to add one more thing? You summarise for us, Martin, and then we're going to move on. Oh, I'm not very good at summaries. Okay. But I would say, buy a car, modify a car. If you want, you don't have to. The factory can do it for you. Seat belts, change the colour of the seat belts. Change the sat-nav. Still a modification. Accessory, whatever. Be happy with your car. Not happy with your car? Change your car to be happy with it. Want an adventure? Make your car fit that adventure. Like Honda engines and love what they do and love minis all and want to put them in a blender and blend it all up and hit go and then drink a delicious smoothie of smoothied up mini and Honda. Do it. There's a few things I think you should not touch, Martin. Okay. A man's lawnmower or a woman's lawnmower. Yes, I would agree with that. A man's guitar or a woman's guitar. Without permission, of course. A man's toolbox or a woman's toolbox. Without permission. Mm. A man's car. Mm. Or a woman's car. Mm. You don't touch it. You don't touch it unless you ask. And you sure as hell don't violate it yes. by scratching it and breaking stuff. Which brings us to our story of an older gentleman in England somewhere, Bibbery, in the Cotswolds or something. Mm. I don't know. Mm. I don't know my, my geographical thing over there. It's causing a bit of storm this week. And BBC reported that this man's car had been vandalised. No good because it's a yellow car, and people didn't like that it was yellow because they said that it ruins the view. There's some old buildings there, and they don't like the yellow car. Now, I think the whole town could make a collective decision at that point, go, you know what? Remove all cars. Yeah. All medicines, all technology, yeah. all processed foods. Yep. Take one of these bricks from the building, Get it actually tested and go, how old is the earth? Not the brick, because yeah. the brick's probably a couple of hundred years old. That's how old right. the earth in it? Mm -hmm. And then look in history at what was happening at that point in time, and everyone can live like that. It's a great idea. And then no one can be upset. No. But you can't be angry at a yellow car, and then take a photo of that yellow car with your iPhone to complain about it, and complain that it's a problem for you, that's so silly. See, I was looking, I mean, this technological and, and, you know, humanitarian angle is one thing. I was just looking at the fact that people are being dickheads and wrecking someone else's car. Yeah, which is cool. unfair. Not cool. Tourists don't like it. Tourists are coming to the town and going, I wanted to take a nice photo and your car is in the way. Guess what? You don't touch someone else's car. You sure as hell don't break it. And if we hear that this happens again, because we actually have a bit of a game plan here, um, if we hear that this man's car is touched again, I just did some maths, Martin. We've got 286,000 viewers of Mighty Car Mods in the UK. We will ask every single one of them to go to this town and park their very noisy, colourful cars there. I'm not joking. The more colourful, the better, by the sounds of this one. I am going to get in touch with the local newspaper, and I'm going to say to them, can you let us know if this man's car is touched again? And if it is, we're just going to send everyone there. Now, Mighty Car Mods fans, do not go and break his car just so you can have a Mighty Car Mods meet. That's not what we're talking about. We won't be able to be there. We'll be in Australia. But if someone touches his car again, we're just going to send all the Mighty Mods fans there. We'll just make a Facebook post and go, hey, everyone, head down to whatever. You know what? It'll be a really fun day. And maybe we can convince the locals of what a nice, lovely com like, community atmosphere. The locals like his car. Atmosphere. Do they? Yeah. 
Oh, it's, it's the surrounding it's so people yeah. that, like, when they come through, they don't want to see it. They don't even live there, man. You know what's pretty funny is that their photos will then be a complete inversion of what they want because they go to take a photo. That's a nice meal, isn't it? And they go click, but then on this day, it's like there's just a wall of cars. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. no meal. It's going to be amazing because people, the tourists are going to come down. We don't like colourful cars. And then, oh, maybe he's not there today. They'll go down. There's just going to be hundreds and hundreds of Mighty Mods fans there doing burnouts. But they won't because that's illegal. Not really. They'll just talk about it while they eat scones and tea because we're in England. Love scones and tea. Martin, let's kick it. Oh, into, is that even legal? Speaking of England, our legal conundrum for today, or our strange legal historical fact, is an English fact that says... Is it, Martin? Yes. You must go to the dentist. You may not transport a rabid dog or a corpse in a London taxi. It's not legal. You are not allowed to do it. It's completely illegal. Don't try. You're not allowed to put a corpse in a cab. <laughs> So it's not legal. Is that's that even never legal? No. That's never occurred to me before, but is it illegal here? I don't know, but that's just a fact that I just looked up a fact and went, hey, that looks like a fun fact. And someone from Uber, please get in touch. Is it illegal to carry a corpse in an Uber? Because you may have a unique selling proposition compared to taxis. Do you know what I mean? I'm just saying. Someone from Uber, please get in touch. Uh, the people who are writing on your wall, they're from our show. Yep, and we oh, want to find out. If you can carry a I think there's a show car. about that. Is there? Yeah, because there was no Ubers left and they made a show called The Walking Dead. Wow. Wow. All right, let's kick it. Two weird stuff off the internet. This week in Weird Stuff from the Internet, we had a big package one. We did? Where? It arrived. Where? In here. Oh, this. This. It's currently packaging us. This arrived. It's packaging the package. Um, so we had a box arrive, and, um, and this was it. This was a personalized tracksuit. Martin, yours, oh, is, yours, has, my, got, yours has got your name on it as well. It says thing on it. Yep. It's also, and I would like to add, us. the middle of summer, and it's also something like 38 degrees today. It's almost heat wave conditions. So wearing a, a jumpsuit is like, you could probably make soup with what's going to be in this. I if think you it's called it a tracksuit, isn't it? Is it? Anyway, YouTube sent it to us. Thanks, YouTube. Thank you, YouTube. Not sure why. And why? No explanation. Bank of the week. <laughs> Banking is the delightful art of recontextualizing a product's name by taking a photo of it near your crotch. It's incredibly juvenile. I'm sure my parents are super proud. You can upload your own banking photos to our Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash banking daily. We'll make the thing doodle on the thing and it'll tickle the thing down here. First up, Martin. Boom. Butt lovers. Oh, nice. Well done. Act two. Oh. Which is apparently how you meant to do it. And someone said, I don't know. I do, is it? I don't, I don't know. know. I, but do you know, like. No, I have no idea. Never... What's the next one? <laughs> okay, let's move on. Um, Martin, this is. That's a man cock. Right man. There. I do you think it, the people who invented the word, like the drink mango cocktails, ever realised that what they is were. Is that mango response? cocktails? It's always mango cocktails. How did you know it was mango cocktails? Because that's what. I had no idea what that was. I'm serious. Yeah. How did you know? Because I can't even see that. Like, I'm that block. Like, that's too far away. But I know that some, anything that says mancock is mango cocktails always. I had no idea. Mm. I had no idea, man. Mm. Seriously, that's epic. Well, not you like a savant. <laughs> <laughs> that's a naked ginger. Good, well done. And he must mean Australia, because look at his thong mum. Over here, a thong is what we call a sandal. Other what? places call a thong a no, g-string. jandals. No, jandals are thongs. Thongs are underpants. No, you're thinking of a g-strings are thongs. Jaffle is a breville, which is a breville. It's sandwich. not a breville, even though breville came up with the, the process. The breville became the thing. It's like do a Google. It's like do a breville. I just hope he doesn't bust a plugger. That means a break your sandal. Thong. Martin. Oh come on. What? I don't know. <laughs> That's a. It's what? <laughs> Okay. Enough said. It's, oh, okay. Let's move it on. Ma oh. 
Beep and loaded. What is man? Sainsbury's is a shop, isn't it? Sainsbury's in the UK. There's so much UK going on today. There is. England. Because the mini, mate. It's because everyone's getting crazy getting on the mini. Crazy on the mini. On the mini, mate. Oh, that's a clever one. I like that. That's like two stages deep. Good job. Well done. Yep. What does it say? That's just some hard up cream. Right? <laughs> does that exist? I guess so. Is that a thing? I don't know. I don't know why I'm asking you. Martin, that's a ring remover, <laughs> which sounds oh, awfully painful. Is that literally for removing rings off your fingers? No, I'm pretty sure it's when you've got a drink and it's uh, got some condensation, you put it down on wood and it leaves a ring. It's for rubbing the ring off. I thought maybe it was just oil for removing your ring. <laughs> it's for when you rub the ring off. All right, let's go. Martin, deep impact. There it is. <laughs> hey, I watched that for the first time recently. Really? Yeah, I've never seen it. What is it? It's just so 90s, it's not funny. Awesome. If you were born in the 90s, you need to watch it. All right, deep impact, there it is. And Martin, ah. there it is. Bank of the week is going to the frozen cock maker. Uh, it's very cold, as we saw last week on the Unicorn Circuit, it was minus 50 in Russia. Do you know why this gets bonus points? A bonus point? Because it's just got, you only, it's only got one thumb, but the whole thing changes because your chill factor is a frozen cock maker. Dude, that's your thumb. Oh my thumb. God. Yeah, that's your is thumb. It? Yes. Or oh, it's my yeah. twin. No, that's your thumb. You're giving yourself bonus points, mate. Really? Where did you find that item? I found it at Kmart. <laughs> you can send in your own thanks to the thing that's on the thing. There it is. Martin. Shopping will never be boring ever again. No, it won't. Ever again. Be creative. You should get, get, your, get your thanking radar on. My recommendation is the, like the vegan health aisle because some of those people um, that are in the marketing for those companies don't quite have a comprehension of how... Life. Funny, the internet can get life. Wow. Um, uh, is so the vegan vegetarian aisle is full of laughs, as is the hardware store and the dog food section. Martin, uh, kick it, my town. My town is where you guys take us to your town and the entire unicorn circuit audience. You take us along, show us some of the cool stuff, show us the uncool stuff, show us what makes your town tick. It's like Tourism, but it's real and and it's not sponsored by an airplane company who's trying to all make us go somewhere that we don't actually want to go. It's sponsored by you, the people. Mm. Um, so Martin, we're going to um, we're not going anywhere, but we're, we're going not. to look at Canada. Now Canada, um, I haven't been there. I have. It's I would um, love to go it's there. Beautiful. It's like it's it's in my top five list mm -hmm. of must go. Place looks awesome. People are awesome and friendly. I've heard the people are like Aussies, like super friendly, so yep. awesome. Heaps of people who are in the cars. Yeah. And their Prime Minister seems like a cool dude. Yeah, let's, he let's seems pretty with it. Chalk him one up as well. Okay. Um, what else? I don't know about him, I'm just trees. saying for the record. There's trees and there's snow and moose and squirrels. And there's this. Hello, Unicorn Circuit. Welcome to my town. My name is Caden Zamiko. I'm 15 years old and I'm from Lethbridge, Alberta, Canada. Lethbridge is in Alberta, one of the 10 provinces in Canada. Lethbridge lies 116 kilometers north of the U.S. border. Our summers are nice and warm, at around 20 degrees Celsius, but the winters can get quite cold. Lethbridge is driven by agriculture, oil and gas. We have a population of around 95,000 people. Okay, this is a 1953 Cadillac convertible. It has a 331 cubic inch engine. Uh, we bought this car in 2002. We've had it till now, which is the uh, first day of 2017. It's probably worth in the neighborhood on $55,000. The uh, engine has 3,000 miles on it. Okay, hopefully the snow will go away. <laughs> we won't have to do much shoveling. We appreciate the summer a lot better <laughs> when we remember the winters. In Lethbridge, we like to curl a lot. Curling is a pretty big sport in Lethbridge. I curl three to four times a week, and I'm a part of a competitive junior team. We call this the Sugar Bowl. It's really just a stormwater reservoir for if it floods. But in the winter, it gets covered in snow, and it's a common weekend activity to go sledding. Most outdoor summer sports come to a halt because of all the snow. Our bridge is famous for being the longest of its type in the world. If you look across the coolies, you can see our famous train bridge, then Whoop Up Drive, which takes you across the coolie. 
and our university, which is built right into the side of a coulee. Because of all the snow, we can do mad drifts. Here we go now. Here in Canada, we really like Tim Hortons. We like to call it Tim's. We have 13 of them here in Lethbridge. Just because it's cold doesn't mean you can't have fun on your bike. This is my school. This morning, it was negative 42 with the wind chill. Now, it's minus 40. Oh, I missed. Thanks for watching, eh? Martin, that was an incredible My Town. One of my favorite. So detailed, so well shot. And I'd like to, a shout out to your Gramps. What a legend shout for getting Gramps. on the show. And shout out to you for showing us all the cool things that you do. Everyone's got different hobbies and different things and skills and things they like to do, and I like to see them. Was that you doing a wheelie on your bike in the snow? And curling. What? I've oh, the thing, the... <laughs> the brushing thing. Amazing. Um, thank you very much for sharing. We would love to hear from your town. Every week we do a shout out of countries that we would love to hear from. Uh, none of you listen and do it, but we're going to do it again. This week we're choosing two countries. Each Marty's countries are... Alaska and Chile. I'm choosing Finland and Singapore. I know Alaska like is not a country. You. I understand it's part, it's a place I'd like to see. Great. Mm. Thank you very much, Martin. Let's kick it into story time. Today in story time, I want to talk about the first time you ever experienced technology and I would like to talk about, in a car, mm -hmm. I would like to talk about the time that I first experienced an electric window. Sure. I was a very little kid, yep. living out in country New South Wales, yep. and my dad came home with a new car. It was an LTD. Oh, I remember those. My like neighbours had one a of those. huge, big thing that was just buttons for absolutely Ford, everything. Big, giant Ford Falcon. I'm pretty sure domestically made in Australia, but big, like big for us. Absolutely huge. It's fair lane, like an extended wheelbase Ford Falcon thing. So I get in it, right? I'm on my way to school, and I'm like, I'm like, there's no thing there to turn. What is this sorcery? And I'm like, hey dad, where's the thing? And he's just like, you just press a button. Do you know what I just realised? What? Do you know what I just realised as well? The first power window I ever used was in my neighbour's LTD. Really? Yes, because they're one of the first cars to have it. Yeah, LTD bros. And I was at, went to my mate's house in the back, we went to the shops, and his mom was, I was like, what's this do? And I was allowed to press it, but I had to ask. I'm like, can I press the window? Meh. Can yeah. I press the window again? Meh. Can I press the window again? Meh. Yeah. Yeah. Here's, anyway, here's what happened, Martin. So I'm like pressing the button, the window's going up and down, blowing my mind. I'm just like, whoop, 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 up and down the window goes. I just can't believe it, right? I get to school. I'm like, on my way to school, I pressed a button to make the window go up and down. You're a liar. A what? Who accused like, you of being a liar? A uh, little Craig. Oh, God. <laughs> and, um... Why? And I punched him out. What's little Craig doing these days? I don't know, but he spewed so hard after I punched him. <laughs> I punched him in the guts. That's a bit violent. No, let me tell you what actually happened. Okay. I got to school, he called me a liar, and I said it was, and I was like, oh, and it kind of like sat with me a bit, because I don't, do not endorse violence of any kind. I was like, I don't know, seven years old or something. Then it came to recess, right? For recess, I had like a bit of homemade bread and a walnut, and that was it. And he came over and he teased me because he had a bag of Cheetos. Right. And as I was eating my walnut, he was just, just eating the Cheetos. Mm, you liar, you liar. He ate his whole bag of Cheetos yeah. and then called me a liar once more. And I punched him in the guts and he just spewed orange a Cheetos. stream of orange Cheetos out. At which point, <laughs> The teacher must have seen what was coming, going on and coming out of his mouth and came over and I was so scared. You know that feeling when you've done oh, something yeah. wrong at school and the teacher's yeah. coming over and I'm like, oh. And just as she comes over, bing, 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 bell goes and she's like, ah, oh, play nicely. <laughs> and that was it. Second car ever went I in. I didn't get teased again, no. Second car ever went in with power windows was an RS Liberty, but it was brand new. And this is like 1991 or 92. Brand new, brand new RS, Liberty. RS Liberty. And I was like... And I do wonder if that stuck with me and that's why I ended up like being Super Subaru Man 5000. Probably. It may be. Interesting to, to think your first car experiences, what cars were they? And has it made a difference to your choice of cars as a slightly older fellow or lady? That's a very good question, Martin. Do you know what I think sometimes is because um, I don't think I've ever bought a brand new car before, mm. right? It's all second hand. My car of the future already exists right now and someone else is driving and it. You don't know it. I always think about that, like your 180 that was cruising along the highways of Japan with some dude who's like smoking durries and going to the office. Yeah. 
Yeah. But and right now, the car. car that I buy in five years' time, yeah. someone already owns it. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Martin, let's finish this thing off with some random eat bag. <laughs> Japan is very good at doing snacks mm. and they do lots of chocolate mm. and they do lots of chips. Mm. There is everything from whale flavoured chips, which we saw and experienced but did not buy, no. through to all sorts of chocolate creations and pocky. Pocky, which are those sticks. It's oh, like a pretzel those dipped in chocolate. Pretzel, pretzel pocky sticks. And Japanese snacks, like, they're so different from American snacks, which are so different from Australian snacks because they're just trying to, like, it's. It's processed food, let's not get too crazy about how the nutritional value of it. But they're so different, there's so much variety. Well, there's no peanut butter in Japanese food. There's a you lot noticed? of it in American snacks. Yeah, but American snacks is all like peanut butter and salted caramel stick or whatever it yeah. is. Yeah. Anyway, Martin, today, um, this is a very common treat that you see around Japan, which is the chocolate magic mushroom. Oh, they're good. Um, and that's all there really is to say about it. Um, if you're in Japan, you should get some But if you're it. in Japan, you should get them. Um, they have their, oh, well, he's a very rude looking fellow, isn't he? He's just, he's just a bit rude, I yeah. reckon. Um, he's, um, I don't know, he's strapping something on his back there. Um, the other thing is, Japanese and American packaging is probably similar. Mm. In Australia, it would probably come like that. Yeah. It would be a bigger bag. Um, Japan and America, I've noticed, has multiple layers of packaging. Lots of packaging. So I guess someone sat, sat around and thought about the experience of what that means, because you don't really need it. No. But it's all about making it look pretty and encouraging people to buy it, isn't it? I guess so, Martin. This expired a year and a half ago. Um, but expiry dates apparently are not like that real, depending on what the item is. Used by and best before, very different things as well. Martin, jump in there and get a mushroom. Uh, everybody, thank you for watching the show. Cheers, man. Um, cheers, Martin. Um, if you've got a car, you can oh, do whatever you like with it. It's so good. And you should. I will be doing that. Marty will be doing it. Thank you very much for everybody who's been watching the show. I do know though, I want to say once, I need to wrap it up, some hardcore mini people who are like, oh, minis are rare in my country, you can't get them, they're really uncomfortable seeing it getting cut up. I empathise with you. I understand why you feel like that. I don't necessarily agree, but I understand. And that's I the thing, say that. if you modify your car and you film it, take a photo of it, post it somewhere, whatever, um, if I know and I see it and I don't love it, I'm definitely oh. not going to get on there and write you an essay about it, um, but I'll just do the cars the way that I like to do it. I think that's kind of not a bad way to go, really. I'm one for two at the moment. I'm okay, done. give us a go. Oh. Too far. Sorry, that sucked. Hold on. Oh, it bounced off my tongue! Yay! Unicorn second. Do it.